everybody. Having to bless you guys with a video, or at least deck tech in a while. I know it's put a gameplay out the other day. Uh, so here we go. Gonna hit you with uh, Octavia Thesis Viva. Her name is not Octavia Living Thesis. Um, anybody, well, at least most Latinos will know they have that one aunt, the tia, that's always in everybody's business. And that's Octavia. She is the living thesis. She's always in everyone's business. I think this deck has the potential to be a lot more political and a lot more interactive than your average mono blue deck. Who among us doesn't have a friend who's attacking somebody and say, you know, attack him, I'll make it an 8-8. Attack him, I'll make it an 8-8. Attack her, I'll make it an 8-8. Who's gonna say no? It's like, if you attack them, we'll get them out of the game faster because I can make those creatures 8 8s instantaneously with, you know, with, with uh, Octavia's Magecraft ability. So that's what, it's, what we're doing. We are going to be spell slaying. We're going to be casting a lot of incense, a lot of sorceries, a lot of card draw. All the creatures are utility creatures. They all do something extra besides be a creature. I didn't go infect. I, the first iteration of this deck, I played it the other night one time, and I realized a lot of these infect cards, a lot of my other artifacts I had were just dead cards in my hand. I had a Hamrat's Archive, I had a whole slew of infect creatures, I had Teferi's uh, Ageless Insight, but they're just dead cards in my hand. I would have much rather had an instant speed draw spell and give me a couple cards, speed up my casting of Octavia, and uh, so th this is the second iteration. I'm gonna play it again tomorrow, and we'll see how it goes. Well, cheers guys, good to see you. Take care. Here we go guys, like I was just talking about, here is Octavia Thesis Viva or Octavia Living Thesis. She costs a whopping 10 manas. That's right, my commander costs 10 mana. Eight colors, double blue for a legendary creature, Elemental Octopus. It reads, this spell costs eight less to cast if you have eight or more instants and sorceries in your bin, in the graveyard. It has ward eight, so it costs eight extra to target it with some kind of spot removal. And it has Magecraft. Whenever you cast a or copy an instant or sorcery, target creature has a base power and toughness 8-8 eight, eight until the turn. And I really like it that it says not your creature. It's any creature that you took, any creature become an 8-8. Eight, eight. Like I said, you're out there helping your friends eliminate your other friends, making their creatures 8-8s. Eight, the whole time you're just casting instants or sorcery like a kook, love and life. <laughs> I think I spent $200 on cards for this deck and I honestly took all the expensive cards out of here Just because I've played this deck three times now every time I played I get a better feel for the game better feel for the deck And I think this is where we're going with it. So here we go We got Lonely sandbar I don't I couldn't find I don't know if I had a copy of the other cycling land in blue I don't know. Isolated Watchtower, Rogue's Passage, Temple of the False God, Myriad Landscape, and Hellmar Depths run out the non-basic lands. And here come a giant brick of 30 islands. Setting the world on fire with these sexy lands. And um, I gotta say, the mana curve is so low on this deck that you don't even need that many lands. I think I was doing my thing and out there being spicy when I had five lands out there at night when I was playing with my good friends at um, Commander at Arms Podcast and the Commander Crew. So here we go. This is a spell slinger deck, like I said. And uh, here are all the spells. Here are all the things that you're going to be doing. Thirst for knowledge. Drawing cards. Keep watch. Your friend, your someone wants to swing at somebody else with some tokens or a bunch of creatures. There you go. Draw them cards. Peek. Take a little looky look. You know, trying not to make it obvious, but you're gonna take a little look. You know how I do. You know, you see something you like, and now you wanna take a little peek at it. Ponder. Frantic search. Behold the multiverse. It's a bit of a dramatic name. Scour all possibilities. Think twice. Compulsive research. Either eyes. Here's a card. I bet you never put never think about putting a deck. 
Manipulated Fate. Search your library for three cards, remove them from the game, and shuffle your library. Draw a card for a two mana sorcery. What are you gonna do with this? You're gonna go get three lands and chuck them out of your deck. You're gonna thin your deck by four cards with this. You know, you, you wanna draw you wanna be drawn action, you don't wanna draw land. So you're gonna go probably get three basic islands out of your deck and remove it from the game and then draw a card. Impulse. Brainstorm. Preordain. Aether Spouts. Again, a little, little protection for yourself. Serum Visions. Opt. Obsessive Search. Deliberate. Resculpt. Strategic Planning. Radical Idea. Good old high tide, taking it back to them fallen empire days, you know, a 14 year old me out there buying packs of cards at Jewels, like they weren't 37 cards in fallen empires. 34 of them being trash. Actually the non-basic lands in, in uh, fallen empires weren't that bad. Talarian wins, another throwback card. Latman's Legacy. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna take a dead card, probably a land, shuffle back in your library, and then draw two cards on the next upkeep. Why not? Telling time. Leadership vacuum. Another thirsty thirsty card. Thirst for meaning. Lazatep plating, which uh, kept me alive until they found another out for their infinite combo the other day. You son of a bitch. James, I don't, I won't forget this. I won't forget that, I should say. Portent, sleight of hand, and then temporal fissure. Return tire permanent to its owner's hand, storm. So, you know, you got temporal fissure. You got a bunch of one, one CMC cards. You got a bunch of two CMC cards. There's another one CMC card. If you can string together a few spells and then cast Temporal Fissure, you're gonna be bouncing on people's stuff left, right, and center. Then we got the Counterspell Package. We got the Poor Man's Free Counterspell Foil. Discard an Island and another card, Counterspell. You know, it's not, it's not Pact of Negation. It's not Force of Will, but here we are. Counterspell, Stubborn Denial, and Arcane Denial. You know, that's the counter spell packages. I usually only run two counter spells when I uh, in my decks, but this deck is super jank, so we got four in it. Now we got a bunch of token generators. We got Murmuring Mystic. Whenever I cast it into a sorcery, make a bird. We got Talrand. Same thing. Whenever I cast an instant or sorcery, make them Canadian rapper tokens. Metallurgic summonings, making Construct tokens, Shark Typhoon tokens, and Docent of Perfection making tokens. So I have all these instants or sorceries and I'm making tons of tokens theoretically with these cards. Now here come the goons. These goons are a little bit different than any other Kevin deck because they all do something. Daring Saboteur, when it hits, you draw a card, discard a card. So you, even if you draw a card and chuck one of your instants or sorceries, you're gonna be making Octavia cheaper to cast. War Infiltrator, again, Skulk is probably gonna be pretty easy to hit somebody with it. And then do the same thing, draw a card, discard a card. Archmage Emeritus, again, I'm casting nothing but instants or sorceries, so I should be drawing double cards. Lujun, Scholar General, Horsemanship, out there drawing cards for hitting people. Should be an 8-8 pretty easily. Um, I don't know how a dude on a horse is unblockable. I mean, I, spears and swords work the same. I mean, you could just throw, chuck a spear at the guy and hit him, but what, what do I know? Looter Ilkor, same thing. Hitting somebody, looting. Gadwick the Whizen. Drawing cards, tapping things. There we go. Night Bale Sprite, surveilling. 
Uh, this card here. <laughs> this card here. The Cephalid Constable. It has, whenever this creature deals damage, return up to X permanence to that player's hand, where X is its power. If this thing's 8-8, eight, eight, you're throwing eight permanents back in their hand. You know, even if it's 1-1, one, one, they cast, they tap out for their splash commander, you bounce back their hand, they're gonna be pretty mad at you. Got a Colonel Kefnet. Again, look at the card, copy it for two less. These spells are all real cheap. If you can get a, if you can get a double brainstorm or a double whatever, there you go. Another looter. Um, Windrider Wizard, whenever I cast an instant or sorcery, draw and discard. This guy here, I'm yet to cast this guy, but I'm pretty excited about this guy. Whenever this is the Sorark uh, Spellblade, Sorark, or Sor whatever the hell his name is, Spellblade. And whenever I cast an instant or sorcery, put a counter on him, draw that many cards. And finally, a Thieving Skydiver, out there snaking people's artifacts, getting that mana crypt, getting that soul ring, whatever. So I have all these super janky creatures that I want to turn into 8-8s by casting instance or sorcery. So what are we going to do? We're going to make them unblockable. Shadow Rift. Unblockable. Draw a card. Open into Wonder. Unblockable. Draw several cards. Slip through space. Unblockable. Draw a card. Distortion Strike. Unblockable. Rebound. Plus all and all. Infiltrate. Unblockable. And Artful Dodge. Unblockable and flashback. Now here are some of the MVPs of the deck, some of the spicy meatballs that go in the deck. We got Body of Knowledge. Has a power and toughness equal to the cards in your hand. Yeah, I have no max, you have no maximum hand size, and when you deal damage with it, draw that many cards. Surprise, if this thing's out, you have your options of unblockable, you're gonna be drawing cards. I think I drew 14 cards with this dumb guy last time I played with him. And it was just fantastic. We got Sundial of the Infinite because why not make them all 8-8s for the rest of the game? Because it says, has a power and toughness 8-8 eight, eight until end of turn. You end your turn and uh, until end of turn's effect end. So now you have just a bunch of 8-8s eight, on the board looking swole for no reason. You have a bunch of 8-8s eight, eight, bird tokens or Canadian rapper tokens or construct tokens that should be one one two twos whatever they are now they're all eight eights forever why not geode golem whenever geode golem deals combat damage to a player you may cast your commander without paying its mana costs oh you don't say so I can hit somebody with geode golem and an artful dodge make him unblockable and I, then I can cast Octavia for free why wouldn't I want to do that? And then we have, I'm gonna make another video about this card just because I'm solely dedicated to how good this card is. Ghostly Pilferer. This card is dumb good. It is two color, or one colorless and one blue for a rogue spirit. Whenever it becomes untapped, I can pay two and draw a card. Whenever opponent can't spell from anywhere other than hand, draw a card. Discard a card, Ghostly Pilferer can't be blocked. There you go, you, it, it does everything you want to do. You, you want to discard an extra instant or sorcery you got? There you go, make Octavia cheaper. You want to make them unblockable, make them 8-8? Boom, there you go. This card is so dumb good. It makes no sense at all. So there it goes, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. That is my deck tech for Octavia Thesis Viva. Octavia Living Thesis, your nosy Thea, that's always in your business, trying to get you to do things against your will out there saying, I know a girl, I know a guy. Why don't you go on a date with them? That's her. Always in the business. All right, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you.